Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days as we read in luke 21 11. and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven the world health organization you love them admit it they're now warning of the potential of another pandemic and buckle up, it could be 20 times worse than COVID-19. Anything happening is a matter of when, not if. So we need to have a placeholder for that, for the disease we don't know. That may come. And that was when we gave the name disease X. H5N1 bird flu has mutated, destroying bird populations, infecting mammals, and now experts say it's only a matter of time until it jumps to humans. Former CDC director says bird flu will be the great pandemic. Dr. Robert Redfield led the CDC when the COVID outbreak began in 2020. He was an early proponent of the lab leak theory. Last March, he testified before Congress that he was sidelined over that belief. Dr. Redfield, thanks so much for joining us. I just want to get your reaction to these State Department documents. Well, Elizabeth, I think it's really important uh, that the Biden administration uh, follow through. I mean, Congress unanimously voted, and they do very few things unanimous, voted to have all these documents declassified. Uh, and I do think once they are declassified, the American public will get a much better understanding of the knowledge base we have. They were doing at this Wuhan lab gain of function research, which is yeah. when you manipulate these viruses to make them highly transmissible right. to humans and then try and come up with a vaccine to stop it. And of course, if it, the theory here and you, something you have always uh, believed is that there was a mistake, an accident at the lab, and somehow that virus leaked out. You, this raises real ethical questions about this gain of function research happening in labs, not just in Wuhan, but around the world. Um, you think they should all be stopping this? Yeah, I wrote an op-ed with Mark Siegel in the uh, Wall, uh, Wall Street Journal a, a little while back, really calling for a moratorium on gain-of-function research. I think it puts our world at great risk. Um, we have the risk of natural spillover, but there is a species barrier. I'm obviously most worried about bird flu. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it takes five amino acid change. Uh, for it to be effectively infecting humans. That's a pretty heavy species barrier. But th this virus is already now in 26 mammal species, as you saw most recently cattle. But in the laboratory, I could make it highly infectious for humans in months because it's been wow. published the f uh, five amino acids that I need to change. And so I don't think that research should be done. That's the real threat. That's the real biosecurity threat that these university labs are doing these bio, uh, bio experiments that are intentionally modifying viruses and bird flu, I think, is going to be the cause of the great pandemic, uh, where they are teaching these viruses how to be more infectious for humans. In the World Health Organization that actually helped China cover up its involvement is now trying to create a pandemic treaty among all member states. Countries will begin negotiations on a zero draft of the new pandemic accord. These discussions will be crucial for building a more effective health security architecture for the future, grounded in international law, equity, and the fundamental right to health for all people. It sounds so great. Fundamental right to, for health to all people. Well, the treaty also aims to have uh, greater international cooperation when it comes to pandemic response. Well, again, it sounds good on the surface. But what does that mean for our freedom? What does it all mean? Well, the Federalists summed it up this way. While the draft treaty doesn't give the WHO direct authority over the country's domestic pandemic policies, it contains numerous ruinous provisions that would push nations to adopt an authoritarian globalist mindset for handling future disease outbreaks. Joining us now is Reggie Littlejohn, attorney and co-chair of the Stop Vax Passports Task Force. Reggie has been looking into all of this for a long time. Reggie, what risks would this pose? 
Well, Laura, there are two instruments that are coming up. They're, they're being negotiated by the World Health Assembly, and one of them could even pass as soon as this May. And be between the two of them, they will establish a global totalitarian biotech surveillance state that would ob obligate all of the countries who um, in the world, the 194 countries who are, are parts of, of the uh, World Health Organization, to surveil our, our citizens. And then also it would obligate us to censor any misinformation or disinformation. Uh, so let's just uh, set aside the fact that the WHO was the main perpetrator of mi misinformation and disinformation in the last pandemic. But they will have the authority to say what is misinformation and what is disinformation. And it also gives the director general, Tedros, the authority to declare uh, interventions, not just on uh, pandemics, but also on potential risks and not do it without even the, the um, authorization of the country that they would be moving into. So these are terrible, terrible things that could come to a vote as early as this May. Well, what they're trying to argue now is that, well, there's going to be a provision that preserves the sovereignty of nations that sign on to this. So everybody's freaking out for no reason. This is just about cooperating together better and having a consistent response. But given the fact that they helped cover up China's lab leak, and they just let China skate with no repercussions whatsoever for China. That leads us to conclude that this is not really about global health, but this is about global control. Absolutely. It is about global control. And what they're doing is they're using health as the instrument to instill fear in people. So you were talking about all this gain of function research and some of these, these uh, le leaks that could come out of these labs could have enormously great um, mortality rates, much greater than COVID. So they will terrify everybody into saying, oh yes, we agree, we'll just be surveilled. We, we, we agree that you have to censor all this information and all of that can be used as the platform of China's social credit system worldwide. Yeah, a global registry. Yeah, a global right. registry is what people are worried about with perhaps banking connected to it, movement, you're the controlling movement if you don't have a certain number of shots. Like That's ultimately their goal, I think. The Antichrist will control a one world government as we read in Revelation 13, 7. It was granted to him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation which is the world. We can plainly see the stage is being set for the Antichrist to take his place on the world stage. What will be the trigger that enables the Antichrist to become the leader of the one world government forcing all people to take his mark and to be worshipped as God? When the deception comes, if you're not a born again believer, you'll be swept away with it. The deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life. It is going to be profound as to what happens. People in the high places are Satanist. They're Illuminati. Spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world. And they have the help of a whole uh, mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations, and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government. And the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God, the Antichrist. We're going to begin in Israel with a major division in the government between the defense minister and the prime minister over who will rule Gaza after the war is over. That split coming as Israel is going after Hamas fighters again in areas it previously cleared out months ago. As the fighting intensifies in central and northern Gaza, a friendly fire incident near the Jabalia refugee camp left five Israeli soldiers dead and seven more wounded. The renewed fighting as Hamas regroups in areas once cleared by the IDF is fueling internal disagreements 
over ruling Gaza after the war is over. Israel's defense minister is blaming Netanyahu because he hasn't helped other Gazans take control. I call on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to make a decision and declare that Israel will not rule over civilian affairs in Gaza. There won't be Israeli military rule in Gaza, and an alternative leadership to Hamas in the Gaza Strip will be advanced immediately. Netanyahu says no Palestinian leaders will step up to govern until Hamas is wiped out. Until it is clear that Hamas does not control Gaza militarily, no party will be willing to take over the civilian management of Gaza for fear of its safety. Therefore, the talk about the day after, when Hamas remains intact, will remain just talk, empty of content. The U.S. Secretary of State again demanded Israel come up with a day after plan. The U.S. is pushing for a two-state solution with the Palestinian Authority in charge. But Netanyahu says the PA is unacceptable because it supports, funds, and educates for terror. God gives the most dire warning to the nations who would divide up his land, as we read in Joel 3, 1 and 2, and Zechariah 12, 8 and 9. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them, in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Hamas, a uh, civilian administration there, with an Israeli military responsibility, overall military responsibility, that's the only thing that would uh, work. And uh, But there's one precondition. You know, the day after Hamas is the day after Hamas. The day after Hamas is destroyed. You can't have it both ways. Meanwhile, the International Court of Justice begins hearings today on South Africa's request to stop Israel's offensive against Hamas battalions in Rafah. Egypt, the first Arab country to sign a peace treaty with Israel, is now joining that effort. Chris, Egypt is now going against Israel at the International Court of Justice. Are there concerns uh, in Israel about their relationship with a key Arab ally? Well, some Israeli analysts say really could have a widespread effect here in the region. Uh, that's because other nations uh, in the region, uh, like the UAE and Iran as well, uh, they're watching to see if Egypt will actually turn on Israel. Remember, they have the longest standing uh, peace treaty here in the Middle East. And it could be one more way uh, that would isolate Israel uh, in the reg regional area arena. But we'll see what happens. But certainly, it's a very significant develop between development between what's happening with uh, Israel and Egypt. Most Israelis are not in favor of a Palestinian state in Gaza. They know what happened with Hamas, and many are leery of the PA as well. And if you listen to the official media of the PA, they're in favor of one state solution, not a two-state solution, a Palestinian state replacing uh, a Jewish state. The prophet Zechariah tells us how the Lord will destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem, as we read in Zechariah 14, 12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. Shameful day. Australia votes yes to back Palestinian bid for UN membership. It did not give the Palestinian mission membership of the United Nations. It did not give the Palestinian mission uh, voting rights at the General Assembly. What it did do, consistent with a two-state solution, <clears throat> was to express the General Assembly's aspiration for Palestinian membership of the United Nations, noting that this must be recommended by the UN Security Council, consistent with the UN Charter. It did not indicate the United Nations or Australia recognise a Palestinian state. It did reaffirm the international community's unwavering support for the two-state solution of Israel and Palestine living side by side in peace and security within recognised borders. It did reaffirm the international community's unwavering support for the two-state solution of Israel and Palestine living side by side in peace and security within recognised borders. First Thessalonians 5.3 While people are saying there is peace and security, 
Then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. Daniel 9, 26 and 27 And after the sixty-two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many, who is Israel, the Palestinians, and possibly other Muslim nations, for one week, which is seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wings of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. In Bible prophecy, we are told in Daniel 9, 26 and 27, the prince who is to come, who is the Antichrist, will come on the world scene and strongly confirm a seven-year covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies. This covenant will kick off the seven-year tribulation. We see the prophesied Antichrist right onto the world stage in Revelation 6-2. Immediately following the rider of the white horse beginning his conquest of the world, we see peace will be taken from the earth when the rider of the red horse of war begins his ride across the earth as we read in Revelation 6, 3 and 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Those who are here to see this will be as those who lived in the days of Noah. All will be well and life will be moving forward as normal when suddenly a flood of God's judgment will begin to fall on mankind which will last for seven years, the culmination of which will be the visible, physical, bodily return of Jesus Christ to the earth at Armageddon. So as we look at what prophecy predicts is going to occur, potentially in the not too distant future, the world is someday going to rejoice that peace has finally come to the Middle East. What will follow that, however, will be anything but peace as the world is suddenly going to explode into warfare. Is the sudden destruction coming, and with it the rapture of the church, the revealing of the Antichrist, and war? All those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will not be here to see the terrible time to come wherein God's judgment will fall upon a world that has forgotten him. Where will we be? In the presence of Jesus Christ our Lord as a result of the rapture of the church. And there will be no announcement as to when that will take place whatsoever prior to it occurring. And if you find yourself here after it occurs, your future is going to be horrific. The stage is being set for Daniel's prophecy concerning the arrival of the Antichrist, which will be preceded by the rapture of the church. The only conclusion one can draw from all this is this. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Consider this a heads up if you're a Christian, and be forewarned if you're a non-believer. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time to get to know Him, and the sooner the better. Stay tuned as we continue to watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. In Europe, the Prime Minister of Slovakia is recovering this morning after an assassination attempt. The suspected gunman was captured at the scene yesterday. A government minister says uh, there was, in his words, quote, a clear political motivation. In broad daylight, as the Prime Minister met members of the public, <laughs> an apparent act of political violence that's reverberating across this continent. Prime Minister Robert Fico was left fighting for his life. Local media reported that the gunman detained at the scene is in his 70s. The shooting was an attack on democracy, said the Slovak president, Zuzana Čapatova. Prime Minister Fico was elected last year on a pro-Russian, anti-American platform, stopping his country's supply of weapons to Ukraine and campaigning against LGBTQ plus rights. It sparked mass protest in Slovakia, a nation with bitter political divisions. The US and its European allies may disagree with Fico's positions, but they've denounced the shooting as a horrific act of violence. Doctors say Prime Minister Fico's condition is serious but now stabilised. One reason why political violence here in Europe is so worrisome is that instability in this region famously led to two world wars, killing tens of millions of people around the globe. Luke 21:25, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days, right before the return of Jesus Christ, is nations will be in a state of perplexity, 
or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Adopted by a majority of French lawmakers, the bill allows French residents who have lived in New Caledonia for 10 years to vote in local elections. Indigenous people on the island, many of whom favour independence from France, fear the bill will dilute their political power. The debate sparked the worst violence in 40 years on the French-ruled Pacific Island. In a letter addressed to New Caledonian officials, Macron called for calm and said the constitutional reform would be adopted this summer at a special session of Congress unless loyalists and pro-independence parties could agree on a fresh text. I invite New Caledonia's political leaders to take France's outstretched hand and come to Paris for discussions in the coming weeks. The important thing is a return to calm. The important thing is dialogue. The important thing is to build a common political and global solution. Violence is neither justifiable nor tolerable. In the capital, Noumea, riots rage on for a second consecutive night. On Tuesday night, buildings like this gymnasium were vandalized and set alight. And stores like this one ransacked by looters. Cars, houses and shops have been torched, leading to food shortages in some neighbourhoods. Over 130 people were arrested as police clashed with heavily armed rioters. Scores of police officers have also been wounded. A pro-independence elected official appealed for calm. I call on parents to speak to their children and the youth and tell them that the struggle is not done in this way. The violence has prompted local authorities to impose a curfew and shut down schools and the airport as security reinforcements from metropolitan France are en route to New Caledonia to help restore order. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal, until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation 
God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.